Hello and welcome to Tech for Non-Techies, the only podcast that demystifies the fast-growing technology sector. I'm your host, Sophia Madriera, Chicago Beef MBA and tech entrepreneur. My aim here is to give you the skills, knowledge and confidence to find opportunities in the tech sector, whether that's through founding a company, getting a dream job or bringing a fresh perspective to your work. Hello, smart people. How are you today? I am well. The sun is shining. I can see the sun shining onto my balcony. The sky is blue and it's warm. And after this, I'm going to go and buy myself some cake in the local patisserie. Because, you know, you got to have cake in life. I, that is one of my core beliefs. Cake is important. So... I've been having adventures in Texas and New Mexico this week, and I'm very excited. These are virtual adventures, though. I am not actually in Mexico or in Texas. I am still in the south of France, where the sky is blue today. But I am the lead instructor on a project with Blackstone, which is a massive fund manager, and Techstars. Techstars is one of the leading tech accelerators, and... They are doing a project at the University of Texas, and I'm the lead instructor there. And this is a project that we're working on for April. I'm teaching entrepreneurship and technology to 24 teams, and those teams are going to compete in a pitch competition to investors, which is going to happen at the end of April. And you have actually heard these investors speak on this very podcast. So one of them is David Segura, who is a very successful non-technical founder who has invested in around 60 startups by now, and Alexandra Zubko, who is also a successful non-technical founder. And we had an episode with her about six months ago. There are other judges as well, but It's interesting that the rise of the non-technical founder is now being picked up by some huge institutions. So our work, our our word is spreading. And you know, it's so easy to focus on all the opportunities that we've lost in this weird year. But many of us have also gained a lot. Um, So for example, in the tech for non-techies community, which began in London, we've now got participants all around the world. So we had a member meetup yesterday and we had members joining us from New York and from Chicago, where I used to live, and Toronto, where I've never actually been to, but I would like to change that, and Brighton. And, you know, this wouldn't have happened a year ago when the focus was strictly London because we were limited by our geographies and, you know, we were kind of limited in our thinking. And... Without this new normal of working from home and online learning, this member meetup that we had or me working literally on a project in Texas from France wouldn't have been possible. So in some ways, our world has shrunk during the pandemic, but in others, it has massively expanded. So a year ago, I was teaching my course at London Business School in a classroom, which is amazing like being with people and seeing their eyes light up. It is a magical experience. But I am still seeing that over Zoom with my project and my students in Texas. So it's interesting how the accepted wisdom has changed. And I think that once the world opens up again, and that's already happening, I do think that the habits that we have now, they're not going to change completely. Yes, we are going to be with people, and I do think in the first couple of months we're really going to be drinking in all of that company, but I also think that we are still going to keep some of those habits, so we are going to be meeting in person and connecting to people all around the world online, and so I actually think that our opportunities have expanded because of our new habits. And I'm feeling super optimistic. I think we're going to have a lot more fun and we're going to have a lot more opportunity. And those are good things. So um, whether someone is in Texas or in London or in Chicago or in New York, the questions that they have about tech products are the same and the mistakes they make are the same. So listen up. In this episode, I want to teach you a key concept 
that I talk about in all of my courses, and that is how to measure the success of your product. You need to have a clear idea of what success looks like for what you're building, whether that's a site, an app, or an algorithm. Put simply, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. Founders, product managers, and investors need to know what the key metric of success is for a product. So then you can measure whether you're getting there or whether you're veering off. So this episode is especially important for founders, product managers, and investors, but really for anybody who is funding tech product or working on product teams. So developers have asked me about what is the product metric that we're working towards, because that's a product metric that they're working towards. Designers have asked me the same thing. So literally, this episode is important for anybody who is making tech product or funding them. But remember, what is a product? We have an episode on that on this very podcast. It was just a few episodes ago. So go back and listen to the what is a product episode. It is one of the core concepts. Put simply, a product is a solution to a problem that somebody is experiencing. I like to use the example of a glass. I use a glass because I'm thirsty and I want a sip of water. The glass is a solution to my problem. As a user, I'm thinking about my problem, my problem being that I'm thirsty. I'm not thinking about the solution. I'm not sitting here thinking, geez, I really want to use a glass. No, I'm thinking I want to relieve myself of my thirst. And the glass helps me do that. Now that we've identified that a product is a solution to a problem that somebody is experiencing, it follows then that the goal of your product is to solve that problem. So literally, that is, that's the most important thing you need to know. The goal of your product is to solve a problem for somebody. So let me tell you what a goal is not. Gamification is not a goal. Having videos in the product is not a goal. Having 10 or 100 screens in your app, that is not a goal. All of these might help you reach your goal, but they are just tools, they're just steps that you would take to get there. So, this is all quite theoretical, so let's talk about something that you are all familiar with, or, you know, I would imagine most of you are familiar with, with this. Airbnb. If you're not familiar with Airbnb, then look it up. I'm just going to assume that you are, and let's go forward. Today, you can get a castle on Airbnb, but it had much more humble beginnings. It was not a castle's lettings agency. The founders of Airbnb began renting out nights on their air mattress in their apartment, literally to make ends meet. Like they didn't have much money, they had an air mattress, they're both designers and there was a design conference happening in San Francisco and they literally just put out an ad to people who are coming to the design conference saying, we've got this air mattress, we've got some toast, it's going to be lovely, we're also going to the conference, come and stay with us and it's not going to be very expensive. Once that worked, other people in the founders network basically started joining them and started doing the same. So renting out spare capacity in their homes. What they were renting out were air mattresses, sofa beds, spare rooms to get a bit of extra cash. The first people who were using Airbnb were not looking for castles. They were looking for cheap accommodation for when they travel. This is a perfect match. You have people who want to save a bit of money when they're traveling, and you want to have people who want to make a little bit of money and have capacity. The metric of success for both of these people was a booking. If a booking is made, a guest gets a cheap place to stay, and the host gets paid. So the key metric the Airbnb product would measure is the number of nights booked. Think about it. Each night represents a problem being solved for the host and the guest. So Airbnb is measuring the number of nights booked. The number of nights booked, the number of problems solved, because 
A product is a solution to a problem. So when you're thinking of building a product or funding one, think about what metric you want to see that says, yes, we are solving the problem for this person. So this is why you always need to go back to the problem that you're solving and to the person whom you're solving it for. Let's use another famous example, Facebook. What problem is Facebook solving for people? And here I mean consumers, users. It's social connection, connecting with people, seeing what they're up to, sharing your news. As humans, we want to connect with people. And God, haven't we really learned that during this pandemic? And Facebook helps us solve that problem in the digital world. A key metric for Facebook then is daily active users, literally how many people have used Facebook today, how many people went on Facebook to socialise in some capacity, whether that is maybe posting an update or commenting on somebody else's update or just seeing what their network is up to, literally just socialising a little bit. Note how in both of the cases that I've given you, Airbnb and Facebook, I haven't talked about money, but... Airbnb and Facebook are both making lots of money. So the point to note here is that a product goal is not the same as a business goal. This is really important. A product goal is not the same as a business goal. Business goals relate to money. Product goals relate to solving a problem. Let me repeat that again because it is so important. Business goals relate to money and product goals relate to solving a problem. It's then up to you to figure out how to make money from solving the problem and thus link the product metrics to business metrics. So let's go back to Airbnb. You could have a great product metric and crappy business metrics. So for example, you could have lots and lots of nights booked, but if the cut that you are taking from those booking payments, if the cut that you're taking is very small, you won't be able to pay for the tech infrastructure to support this whole system. So you see, profits are not a product goal, they are a business goal. One of the things that product managers and founders have to work out is how product goals help you achieve business goals. And this is what investors are looking for too. Investors are in the game to make money, literally that is their whole job. So if you're an investor, always think about how reaching product goals is going to help a company make money. Let's have a look at our Facebook example. Consumers don't give Facebook money to use it. Facebook is free for consumers to use. Facebook monetizes our attention by selling advertising. For which, by the way, I pay as a business owner through gritted teeth because it is so expensive. It's so expensive. Anyway, I digress. The product goal for Facebook is daily active users. And the business goal is the revenue that they would get from their advertisers, like me, minus the cost, i.e. profit. Because that's what profit is, right? Revenue minus costs. And this is where terms like unit economics comes in, but we don't have the time to go into all of that in this podcast. Basically, to sum up, whether you are building a product or investing in one, you need to have a key metric in your product that you set as a goal. You can then measure if you are moving towards that goal and you can see whether you are moving towards success. You need to have this goal visible. You need to have it on some kind of analytics panel that you refer to and you check every time you release a new feature. Did releasing that new feature move you closer to your goal? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But if you're constantly measuring success, if you're constantly iterating your product, releasing new versions and you understand why you're releasing the versions, you understand, okay, we're releasing this new version in order to somehow get more bookings for nights on Airbnb. If you're getting more night bookings, that means whatever you're releasing happens to be working. 
the product goal must relate to the problem that you are solving. This means it's going to be different for different products. Airbnb's goal is different to the goal that Facebook has for its product because they are solving different problems. Product metrics are not the same as business metrics, so do not tell app developers and designers to make you more money. That will confuse them. You have to find a way to monetize the product, which means relating how you're solving that problem, so relating your product metric to your business metric. This is an introduction to the basic concepts, but there is a lot more. So for example, in a lot of products, product metrics change over time, growth metrics certainly change over time, and as we have covered before, product metrics and growth metrics have to be kind of baked into each other. I will be teaching a class on product metrics and how to measure success to our members in May. We have weekly classes in our membership. Every week we have either me teaching a particular concept or we have a guest speaker. Each time you have the chance to ask your questions and see how the concepts that you're learning relate to the products you're working on, the products you're thinking of investing in and whatever career change you want to be making. So we will be covering how to measure success in your product in May. If you want to join the session and ask your questions, then join us in Tech for non Techies as a member. You'll also get to hang out on our monthly member meetups and meet all these fabulous international members who are working on really interesting things. Also, here is a freebie. On the 26th of April, 2021, so very, very soon, I'll be teaching a free class on how to transition into a career in tech. I'll show you five different case studies of people who don't have technical backgrounds and have successfully transitioned into tech. If you think you want to work in the tech sector, but you don't know where to start and you're thinking, is it entrepreneurship? Is it product management? I don't really know what product managers do. Are there other ways? I don't know what to do, but I want a piece of this tech pie. Then this session is definitely for you. The link is in the show notes or literally just go to techfornontechies.co forward slash events and you will see a link to the masterclass there. That's techfornontechies.co forward slash events. If you join live, you'll be able to ask your questions and get some suggestions for practical steps to take next. So it's going to be fabulous. I really want to see you there. So that's it for now, my dear smart people. We have covered a lot of ground today, but you know, you're smart. You can take it. I have faith in you. And on this note, I'm wishing you a fabulous day and I'll speak to you next week. Ciao.